Today's video is an introduction to academic works. In this video, we will be covering what the academic work system is, how applicants are matched with opportunities, what your applicants will see, how you can communicate with applicants, and we'll take a brief look at the administrator portal. So what is Academic Works? Well, we're an online scholarship management system offering a fully cloud-based solution for collecting and awarding scholarship applications. This means that you can log in from any time, from anywhere, without having to be connected to a specific network. We also facilitate a renewable scholarship awarding package or a stewardship management package as well. Some details about the academic work system. We are cloud hosted and we are hosted with Amazon Web Services. And the Amazon Web Services platform offers performance and scalability while ensuring the security and integrity of client data. We also are a highly configurable platform, and we offer a flexible framework to support multiple processes and administrators while providing a common platform for reporting and compliance. So you're really able to build your workflow into your academic work system. We have great client service. Our dedicated client services team will ensure continued partnership as your process continues to grow and evolve. And we have been very successful. We have over 500 institutions of higher education that have selected Academic Works in just the past five years. More campuses use Academic Works than all other solutions combined. So you're in great company. Let's talk a little bit about campus network integration. How does Academic Works integrate with your campus network? The first way might be through authentication. While there are several different methods that Academic Works can use to authenticate your users into the system, if you're using a single sign-on type method to uh, authenticate your users, then students and administrators can sign into Academic Works using their existing campus username and password or their email addresses that they have on file. And the Academic Work System will either ask permission from your servers or send your users right into the campus portal where they can sign in there and then be redirected back. So we can integrate the authentication depending on the type of authentication method that you choose upon implementation of the Academic Work System. If you currently don't use a single sign-on method at your institution, that's not a problem. We do have other types of authentication that you can choose from. The other common integration with Campus Networks would be your data export. This is information that you're gathering from a student information system and sending to Academic Works on a regularly scheduled basis. This could be a nightly export or maybe um, every other night whatever kind of a schedule you choose. Now it's important to remember that Academic Works at no time ever goes into your student information system to access this information. This information is built by a query that your IT team designs, pulls information out of the student information system, and places it in a CSV file. That CSV file is then securely sent over to Academic Works where it's then uploaded into the system so that current and accurate information can be attached to all of your student applications. Let's talk about some of the system basics. How do our applicants actually complete an application for scholarships? Well, in your basic system, the first time that an applicant logs in, they'll land on the general application. The general application is filled out by the students and would also include any of that imported data that you're sending over to Academic Works. Once they submit that general application, the system will begin to automatically match those applicants 
to scholarships that they meet the qualifications for based on the general applications, so those questions that they've answered and that imported data. This all happens behind the scenes and your applicants don't have to take any further steps to match to those auto-match opportunities. But something else is happening as well. Perhaps you have some apply to opportunities in your system. An apply to opportunity would be any opportunity in the system that requires the applicants answer additional questions that weren't included on the general application. These opportunities are recommended to students based on the qualifications and applicants can then manually apply by answering those supplemental questions. Once they have submitted their apply to opportunities, then it's time for them to go through the reviewing and possibly awarding process. Now, if you have introduced conditional applications into your system, the process may be a little bit different for your applicants. Everybody still goes in and fills out that general application that has some profile questions on it and that imported data. But once they submit, some other things begin to happen. They will auto-match to any opportunities that are not associated with any of the conditional applications in your system and be recommended to apply to any apply to opportunities that also are not associated with any conditionals. But sometimes you've added a conditional application in your system. A conditional application asks additional questions of applicants that meet certain qualifications or criteria. So you might want to ask specific questions of a specific applicant population, like business majors. Maybe you have some business type questions that you need to ask all of your business majors that you don't want to put on your general application because nursing majors wouldn't want to answer business related questions and liberal arts majors wouldn't want to answer business related questions. So you move those questions to a conditional application and ask them there to the more appropriate applicant population. Applicants that meet the qualifications for these conditional applications will be directed right to those conditional applications to be completed. Once they submit the conditional applications, the system will then begin to automatically match or recommend apply to opportunities that are associated with that particular conditional application. It is possible that some of your applicants may be directed to two different conditional applications, like maybe they have a double major. And if that's the case, they just complete the second conditional, submit that, and the same process takes place. Once they have submitted all of their applications, then it's time to go in and begin the reviewing and awarding process for those applicants. So let's go ahead and jump into a test system and take a look at what the applicant might experience while applying for scholarships through Academic Works. Here we are logged into a test site as Sally Seashell. And when she first logs in, she's directed to the general application and she gets a nice little welcome message. Click anywhere on the screen and she can begin to fill out her general application. She's only required to complete the questions with asterisks. Those are our, the, the required questions in order to finish and submit. But she can save and keep editing her application at any time. And she'll get a little message letting her know that her application was saved. Sally also has access to her applicant record, which contains any um, imported data that has been transferred into the academic work system on her behalf. So she would be able to check out any of that imported data. So if her major was wrong, she might want to contact the records office and let them know, oh, I changed my major, we need to take care of that. And she can go through here and answer some of the questions. We have some single answer questions where she needs to pick out a specific um, answer. Some number type questions where she has to answer, enter a number for her answer. 
there's some question sets where you might have several questions under the same heading. So extracurricular, she needs to fill out the name of activity, when she participated, and all of that. And if she needs to add another answer, she can click add another answer and begin the second activity that she would like to report. As we scroll down a little further, we see that we can do a file upload where the applicant is able to upload a file that can be opened by an administrator or a reviewer at the appropriate time. We may have some multiple select answers where the applicant can select more than one answer that's listed. An essay question where they would type out an essay and they can add a confidential reference request. They just type in the name and email of that reference. And an email will be sent to that reference upon saving or submitting the application, inviting that reference to come into the system and provide a reference for Sally. Sally will never see um, the uh, the reference that she has requested. It is completely confidential. She would only be able to see whether or not that reference has submitted a reference on her behalf. We'll come down here and sign our application and enter today's date and finish and submit. Now if Sally were um, eligible to do a conditional application at this time that conditional application would pop up and she would go ahead and complete that particular application. But Sally doesn't qualify for any of the conditionals so she's taken right to the recommended opportunities. Now these are the apply to opportunities that Sally meets the basic quali qualifications for and the system is letting her know that she might be a good candidate and might consider applying to these as well. I can click anywhere on the page and take me to a list of the recommended opportunities for Sally. And all she needs to do is click apply and answer the questions on the apply to opportunity. finish and submit and we'll go back to the page of recommended opportunities and see that the opportunity she applied for is now here at the bottom where she can view her application and make updates up until the date that the opportunity ends. Now if Sally clicks on my applications she'll be taken to a page where she shows some status bars where she can see how many recommended opportunities she has versus completed, reference letters that have been submitted. So I requested a reference, but they have not been submitted by the reference giver just yet. And I can see how many general applications I've submitted. My page is also divided in sections. So I'll see the general application section. And if I have a conditional, that would also display here under general application and any apply to opportunities that I have submitted an application for would also show in the current section. Currently, by default, our systems do not show any auto match opportunities that our applicant matches with. But if you would like them to see their auto match applications, go ahead and contact customer support and chat with them a little bit about making that change and whether it would be a good change or maybe not such a great idea. The other thing that we'll see as we work in the system is a needs attention section that will pop up here at the top. Anytime your applicant needs to finish some work or submit something additional, maybe accept an offer of an award, those items will show up in the needs attention section right here at the top and it will push all of the other sections down a bit. It will make it very obvious that there is some work that your applicants need to complete at that time. 
Other things that the applicants can see from their dashboard are the all opportunities. If I go to all, it's going to show all of the opportunities that are visible within your system. We can see some that have ended, some that might be auto match opportunities. Anything that you have marked as being visible in your uh, system will show up on this particular page. The next tab is the donors tab. And here your applicants can see a little bit more information about your donors as long as you have donor profiles set up in your system. They can click on any of the donors and view additional information about those donors as well as get links to any of the opportunities that those donors might be associated with. Lastly, if they click on the References tab, this is where they can see a list of anybody they have requested as being a reference. And they'll be listed under the application on which the applicant requested them to be a reference. We have the name and the email of the reference, the date that we made the request, and the current status. If the reference has gone ahead and completed the reference request, the status will change to submitted. But after a certain time, if the applicant sees that the reference is not completing and it still says requested, they do have the option to resend the request just by clicking the resend request button and a new email will go out to the reference and asking them again to come in and complete a reference on the applicant's behalf. And remember, this is confidential. The applicant will never see what the reference submits on their behalf. So that's what our applicants will experience as they're working through the academic work system. Let's take a quick peek at the administrator portal so you'll know what to expect the first time that you log in as an administrator. Generally, the first time you log in, you'll land on the system dashboard where you can see a snapshot of what's happening in your system. Any of these items can be clicked on to lead you straight to the area that the information is being pulled from. So general applications, if I click on my general applications, it's going to take me to my general application grid where I can see all of the general applications that have been submitted to the academic work system. As you move through the, your system, you'll get more and more used to how you're seeing the data and easily be able to move through, find your applicants, review applications, make awards, and collect post acceptance from your applicants. So I hope that you enjoy your academic work system. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to client support, to your client engagement specialist, or any of us, any of us here at Academic Works. Thank you.